Alright. I'm Roberto Fernandez. I'm a social studies teacher at Plantation High School. I'm also the Historical Society's historian in residence. Um, what are the things that I've been doing um, for the past six years is I've been working with Plantation High School and the Historical Society to create a curriculum that will be able to meet the needs of the students that we have in the service learning project. Um, actually, several service learning projects out of Woodlawn Cemetery in Fort Lauderdale. So, most of this lecture is going to focus on Woodlawn and some of the stories that we've learned through oral history and research um, based on the stones and just the information we have on Woodlawn. And then the latter half is going to focus on some research we're doing now on Dr. Von Meisel, um, who was the uh, director of Provident Hospital along with Dr. Sistrom. So, I'm going to go into Dr. Meisel a little bit because that's my paper that I'm currently writing. So now I'm going to start transitioning from Woodlawn into um, the story of like medical care here in Broward and Dr. Mizell. So this is one of the other older stones. I remember told you about the style. And Maggie Davis was uh, born in Virginia in 1876. <coughs> she was married to a gentleman named George Davis, and she worked as a housewife. On June 21st, 1923, she went to Miami, specifically Overtown, to Christian Hospital for a surgical procedure. Now keep in mind, Providence would not come about until 1938. Now, I did some research about Christian, because I'm like, okay, this is important to know. So Christian <coughs> Hospital was dedicated in 1918. It was founded with the assistance of a white woman, Miss Clarence Bush, who was unable to get her black maid admitted into the local county-owned hospital, which today we know as Jackson Memorial Hospital. At the time, blacks were denied treatment at existing hospital facilities in Miami and Broward. Ms. Bush donated $5,000 to a group of black citizens to help construct their own institution in Overtown. Dr. William Sawyer and others in the black community organized Christian Hospital, a 12-bed facility provide quality medical care for black Miamians. Christian Hospital pro uh, prospered until other previously white-owned facilities started integrating, and the hospital finally shut down in 1982, when the census was basically at 30% or less. Why did it? Yeah. Let's take care of Dan first. All right, so there's two books that I'll show you later um, that are, in my opinion, go-to books about black history here in Fort Lauderdale. And both books, one I can tell relies on the la on the earlier one, is Black Pioneers in Broward County. All right. Now, what I like about this book is that it is a, to, from what I can tell, it seems like it is a book written based on the oral history of the African American community here in Broward. And one of the stories in the book is that of John McBride. And the story goes that John was walking down the street on Hammondville Road, which is today uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard, or Northwest 31st Ave, in Pompano. <clears throat> and he was walking along, and then some kids in a car started shooting at him. And the story in the book goes that John was then taken my, to Dr. Mizell. Dr. Mizell tried to get into Broward General Hospital. He had to plead with them for several hours before they would actually admit him into the OR so he could per perform the surgery. After the sur surgery was complete, John was transferred to the Broward County Sanatorium, which was... I'll get to that. So John was transferred to the sanatorium, which was basically a filthy hospital and was the only place that African Americans could get a bed to recover. Story goes that a couple of days later a white physician went in to look at John's condition, uh, told the nurse to administer him certain medications because he's not going to make it. And so John died as a result of that other physician's um, handling of the case. The woman was eventually fired from her position, um, and Dr. Mizell lost his mind because it was his patient, and no one should have been messing with his patient. 
So my thought was, okay, let me see if John McBride died. So I requested the death certificate based on the information in the book. There is no John McBride that died in this year. So I went out to Ancestry.com, and I went to the Florida death records, and I started looking into the 1930s to see if there was a McBride at all. John McBride, did he die in 36, maybe 37, because the state won't tell you. It's just like, oh, you pick 38, he's not here, not our problem. So I found Dan McBride, and then I also found his son. The reason I know it's Dan McBride is because I got his death certificate last Wednesday. It took me a while to get it. Um, and it listed him as being shot. Unfortunately, the signature on the bottom is not that of Dr. Mizell. But one of the things I love about the process is that the oral history is not that far off. You know, the, the rest of the story in the book goes that three months later they opened up Provident Hospital. Their years in the book are off. They say it was 1932, 1933. It's actually 1937. So, memory is a funny thing, but the crux of the oral history is still correct that I was able to find a McBride from Pompano that was shot. So, now this is a picture of Provident Hospital in 1938, right after it opened. That's the hospital. Now the hospital was opened up. Um, they had to set up a community board to actually help, and it consisted of both African American leaders and white leaders. One of the members of the community board for Providence was Ivy Stranahan, and the historical society does have correspondence between Ivy Stranahan and Dr. Mizell and Alfred Mizell. Um, and there's just, you know, I haven't looked at all of it yet, but I did find some cool um, stories. And one of the things that, switch over here. 